Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black gloss. I'm wearing a red t-shirt with a yellow lightning bolt down the center because in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about charging because we're going to be driving from Sydney all the way to Melbourne. Now, if you've watched my previous video from um, Melbourne to Sydney, this one's going to be a little bit different. So in Melbourne to Sydney, what we did is I wanted to see what it was like to do a road trip if you didn't know much about electric cars. You sat down in a Tesla, you typed in Sydney, and you just followed the instructions of the car. Go to the supercharger, go to that supercharger, stay there, stay this. If you'd like to see that video, go check it out. I'll put a link somewhere around here. In this video from the drive to Sydney to Melbourne, slightly different. What I want to do is I want to not use any of the Tesla superchargers. So I want to see what it's like if I was driving a non-Tesla vehicle and what the charging infrastructure is like for that and that sort of experience. Now, a few things about road trips with electric cars. Interestingly enough, the way that electric cars work is they're least efficient when driving on the highway. So for a number of reasons, but first of all, so electric cars have got this cool thing called regenerative braking, where when you take your foot off the accelerator, and with some, it's not that it works with the brakes, but basically what it works is how the car slows itself down is as you take your foot off the accelerator, particularly with a Tesla, is that it uses the energy of the wheels and the car slows itself down, but it takes that energy of slowing the car down and it puts that energy back in the battery. So sort of stop start driving in city is actually really good for battery efficiency because you're constantly sort of slowing yourself down and putting a little bit more juice back in the battery. Like really cool. If you're driving down like a mountain, you could start with like 80% at the top of the hill and you'd be, you know, have 85 at the bottom of the hill, which is pretty awesome. Other things that affect your efficiency is the temperature. So batteries generally like to be quite warm. I think the ideal, t I, I don't know, but someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think the ideal temperature for a Tesla battery is about 25, between 25 and 45 degrees, depending on what it needs to be doing. Um, so if it's cold, your battery might not last as long. So there's that as well. Um, also temperature, so aerodynamics. So if you've got a headwind, that's going to slow you down. Tailwind's going to speed you up. If the car's particularly dirty, um, anything that affects the aerodynamics can slow the car down. So highway driving is actually the least efficient for the battery, which is interesting. Um, now you do need to do a little bit more planning if you're going on a road trip, not in a Tesla, because the Tesla sort of works everything else out for you. Now, I haven't driven any other electric cars, so I'm not sure how other electric cars deal with this. If people know in the comments, please let me know. Um, hopefully I will get to try out some other electric cars. In fact, the reason why I was up in Sydney is because I was here for the fully charged electric show, um, and I made some cool contacts where I might be getting some cool new cars to try out, watch the space. But as I said, so it does take a little bit more planning um, when you're doing an electric road trip with a non-Tesla. And it's not a huge amount, but just worth looking at. So the first app that I want to show you that you use for your planning is an app called PlugShare. And how this works is you go into the app, t tap in, you know, <coughs> excuse me, show me, you know, show me where, where I am. And it'll show you all the charges that are around you. So for example, here, I'm at Bondi Beach. You can see there's actually a couple of charges around here. If I tap on the one that I'm at, the green ones are like sort of AC charging, so slightly slower, and yellow or orange, sorry, orange, are the faster ones. Um, so you can see here that I checked in a little while. I've got another 24 minutes before I can check out. It shows you that there is a fee. Well, like I covered this app in another video. Check out my charging video, and you'll see more details about that. So plug share, but we'll get back to that in a moment. And I'm talking a little bit fast because the sun's coming up and my light's going to change, so I need to do this. Uh, quick smart. So the app that I'm actually going to use is an app called a better route planner. And how a better route planner works is you put in where you're starting. So I'm starting from here on Bondi Beach, and I'm going to drive to Chadston in Melbourne. You put in what car you're driving. Now I have cheated a little bit here because, um, so if I put in that I was in a Model Y or in a Tesla, a better route planner would just say, oh, we'll just, you know, go to the Tesla superchargers, but I don't want to do that on this drive. So I've told it I'm in an Ionic 5. So you can say what car you're in, what percentage your battery's at, um, what percentage you want to get to. So I'm saying, yeah, if I get to Melbourne with 10%, that's fine. A little bit of other information, and then you tap on, you know, work out the route for me, and it goes out and works out that route for you. And it's just having a bit of a think now. 
So there we go. So it's come up with my route and it's saying that it will take me eight hours and 52 minutes to do the drive with another one hour and 19 minutes worth of charging with four charges. My first stop that it's suggesting is in Goldburn and it's saying I should get there with 21% and I should charge there for 30 minutes, get up to 95%. Then go to Takuta, I should get there with 11% and I'll charge it for 17 minutes to get up to 70%, then charge you get the basic idea and you can change this so you can say no i don't want to go there i want to go in another place um and i can then just tap on go and this you can just pop your phone up on you know where you, you put your phone and it'll actually do like a navigation it'll do maps for you as well um if you're doing this with a tesla kind of cool thing is you can tap on share then tap on map tap on apple maps and then you see how there's a little share icon in the sort of top right hand corner of the directions. And if I tap on that, I can then use the share sheets as it's called, tap on Tesla, and then I can share that map to my Tesla's navigation system. And there you go, it's just popped it on my Tesla and my, then my Tesla maps are on there and it's doing its thing. Pretty cool, right? But I actually don't want to go there. I actually want to try out one of the of course, there's a car alarm going off. I do apologize for that. I hope you're not hearing that too much on the um, sound. But I actually wanted to try a different charger on the way because I want to try one of the NRMA chargers. So I'm going to go into, um, into plug share. And where was that charger that I wanted to try out? Um, it's Kilter. Now we want to go f much further. Um, I think it was this one in Sutton Forest. So I want to check out Sutton Forest. If I tap on Sutton Forest, tap on the map, so you get directions, go Apple Maps, then again, this is odd, but it, just slightly different with Plugshare. You have to tap on Cancel for that direction and then tap on the Share option, tap on Tesla, and it'll then send that navigation straight to your Tesla. Now, while that's having a bit of a thing, now that is saying that I should get there with 55%, It'll take an hour and 43 minutes to do it and um, yeah fairly straightforward now before we get going I do want to show you a couple of things just here on the Tesla system here so this is um, down here this sort of gives you a little bit more of indication of your efficiency so um, you can see that on my current drive I did um, I used two kilowatt hours it was 21 kilometers because I was staying with my cousins up on the shore um, and I was doing 109 kilowatt hours per kilometer now I think, and I keep getting this confused, but I think how this works is the lower the number, the better when it comes to um, the kilowatt hours. So, for example, um, sort of city driving, you'll be like 100, 120. I found on the drive up here for um, highway driving, I was normally around the 100 and... 60-ish mark, sort of 160, 170, somewhere between there, and that's sort of like how efficient you can go. Um, now also, you do have this efficiency uh, system, so orange is you weren't driving particularly efficient, and green is you were charging, if, if you know, extra efficient, and you want to have that little dot above the grey line, ideally. Um, again, I'm not going to drive in any particular, I'm not going to drive extra slow, extra fast, I'm just going to do the speed limit because I wanted to see if you're not specifically making adjustments for being an electric car, you're just driving normally as it were and what that experience is like. Um, the last thing to look at uh, before we actually get going is probably one of the most important things of a trip which is patkos or trip food because uh, it's important to, to hydrate and keep your snacks up. So I've got my two liters of water which uh, I get through pretty quickly. I then have my Tupperware O Biltong. Uh, we then have another Tupperware with um, some dry horse, which is really handy because you just grab that and sort of just nush on that as you go along. And I really love random Asian snacks. Um, I just I just love trying new things. So my local one, and if you watch the video for coming up, I, I actually, I, I hardly got through any of the snacks what, that on, on the drive up, so I've still got plenty left. Um, so uh, kind of cool. I want to give a shout out to my local store, the um, Snack Box on Centre Road in Melbourne. Um, they, they're now giving out these cool reusable bags and I'm easily impressed, but it's got a little pouch that's a little teddy bear that you can fold the bag into, which is kind of nice. Um, if you want to watch, see what sort of stuff I've got in here, it's pretty much the same stuff I had last time. But So <coughs> we've got um, some wheat cracker soy ramens. We've got um, fruit jellies. Oh, we've got 
milk mochi got whatever that is um, and I do have some healthy stuff I've got some um, well healthy by my definition I've got some soy crisps I've got some pecanuts and I've got some some muesli bars in there but um, yeah, we'll see if we touch those I'm not sure uh, right well, I think that's everything if there's anything I've missed or anything I'll, I've thought of I'll, um, I'll I'll catch you up on the drive and yeah yeah let's um let's get going <laughs> little thing um, and I had the same sort of thing when I was driving up from Melbourne so when we left Bondi Beach um, the prediction of the car it reckoned that I was going to be at about 58% battery um, by the time we got to this first charger but now it's saying we're going to be as high as 63% now I reckon it's going to get back down close towards 58 because it did this all the way on the drive up from Melbourne uh, so because there's been a bit of traffic so again you remember how I said stop start traffic is actually good for the efficiency of the battery and you'll get more range out of it so because there's been a bit stop start traffic and you know that's sort of been going on it's now predicting that we're going to have five more percent when we get there which is pretty cool uh, while I've got you here I do want to talk a little bit about the autopilot function of the Tesla Model Y now this is I've spoken about this in a couple of other videos but this might be the first video that you're watching on my channel so I think it's well worth talking about a little bit here there's two levels of autopilot on the Tesla Model Y's and Model 3's that, that they come with standard so the first one is um, adaptive cruise control and how you turn that on is you flick down on the right hand stalk and that activates and you can see there that it's saying 61 max because I've got it set to max out at the speed that I'm driving so I'll get up to 76 push down it's now 77 and then to get it to match the actual speed limit you either push down and hold or you can tap the actual speed and then it sets it to 100 now the car will now adjust my speed depending on the speed of the car in front of me so I've got a truck in front of me right now and they're doing 75 74 and they're slowing down a bit and so my speed will adjust accordingly you can also change the the um, follow distance so there's a little dial on the right hand side of the steering wheel and if I flick it back you can see there now I've got a four car limit and I can set that all the way back to seven or I can set it down oops going a little bit out of my lane there bad me or I can set it all the way down to two car lengths but I like to have it to three car lengths now you notice how the car warned me there that I wasn't really paying enough attention because I was looking at the screen and I veered a little bit out of my lane very bad of me it, I, I shouldn't have been looking at the screen as closely but that lets me talk about the next stage of autopilot which is lane keep assist so to activate that you double click double push down on the right hand stalk so I push down twice and then you see I get these two blue lines on the outside of my car in the display see how good the adaptive cruise control that car came in in front of us and saw it and pretty good huh and how this works is as long as there are road markings on the roads you can see there's white lines the car will now keep me in the lane now I do have to keep my hands on the wheel and watch what happens this guy's probably gonna no he's not gonna come out in front so you do have to keep your hands on the wheel if you take your hands off the wheel I'm just gonna have my hands kind of floating above the wheel because it's looking for just a little bit of you know a little bit of pressure from your hands or moving your hands a little bit from side to side so a little bit of tension on the steering wheel if it doesn't feel that for about 30 to 45 seconds a little thing will come come up here and say put your hands on the wheel and if I don't it'll start flashing in blue here and really sort of say put your hands on the wheel and if I don't do that it'll actually turn the autopilot off and I believe I've never actually done this to try it but I believe then what happens is if it turns autopilot off you can't activate autopilot again until you pull over the car and put it into park the reason why I want to talk about this feature is that it 
I love this feature and I love this feature a lot. And the reason why I love it, particularly for long drives, is that I find it really helps alleviate, see there we go, it's saying apply pressure and then it's not, so I've just got to give the steering wheel just a little bit of a wiggle and then it doesn't complain for a little bit. And if you want to turn autopilot off, just push up on the, on the right hand stalk and that turns off autopilot and adaptive cruise control. If you wanted to turn the lane assist off but keep the adaptive cruise control on, just indicate and change lanes and it'll turn off the, the, the lane keep assist. So as I was saying, the thing that I really love about this is that it really helps with driver fatigue. And again, I'm not saying you don't get fatigued and I'm not saying that you don't have to concentrate. You still have to pay attention to all the other drivers around you because you know you might see someone in front of you veering in and out of the lane. You know, oh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get ahead of them. Or I'm going to pull back and so you still have to drive and pay attention. But just the fact that you're not having to focus all the time on the accelerator to slow yourself down and speed yourself up and you're not concentrating all the time to keep yourself in the lane you know instead of having to have 95 percent concentration while you're driving you can have you know 75 85 percent concentrations not a lot less but just that little bit less really at least for me really makes me feel a lot less fatigued from long drives like this so yeah it's, it's really good um so yeah it looks like we're going to get there in an hour and three minutes um our efficiency at the moment is is is, is pretty darn good um i did add <laughs> about a kilometer worth of driving as i was leaving bondo because as i was driving up the hill sort of I, I i looked to the side and was like oh my word the sunrise is just stunning so i thought okay i'm, I'm just gonna as soon as i can turn around i'll turn around quickly and just go back down the hill and try and get a little bit of the sunrise um and i think i'll, I'll play some of that footage now and i think it, i think you'll agree it was well worth the the extra kilometer um to get that sunrise because it was just oh, i wish i'd had time to sort of just sit there for a bit and and, and, and just grab some footage and actually i need to change lanes because I'm in a turning lane so there you go I've changed lane. as soon as I change lane it turned the lane assist off and then I could just turn it back on if you want to be able to change lanes without turning the lane assist off you can buy a thing called enhanced autopilot which adds a whole bunch of features one of them being the autopilot will actually change lanes for you which is pretty cool um, but enhanced autopilot is five grand so it's, it's a fair chunk of change um, it'd be really cool if you could like subscribe to it sort of like on and off oh please tell me I'm in the correct thing well I I th okay I think this is a challenge my focus is not great and so um, actually I hope the camera's in focus I'm, I'm confident the camera's in focus but my focus is not great so if I'm talking to you and I'm kind of paying attention to the road I might take a wrong turn off here and there, so hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure it will eventually. Um, yeah, I would have loved to have just sat there on Bondi and just gotten footage, but I also want to get home, so I wanted to definitely get out of Sydney before traffic got, got pretty bad. Um, yeah. And, you know, again, <coughs> you know, I could, as you can see, I'm going to be at, now saying I'm going to be at 64% when I get to um, this first charger. So I could have gone a fair bit further and it's gonna be interesting to see how a better route planner recalculates this whole trip because I've, I haven't gone as far as it wanted me to go to that first charger, it wanted me to go all the way to Goulburn. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how, how, it, how it changes um, what I need to do. I will also mention something I, I, I forgot to mention in, in the introduction is that I think it's really important when you're doing these sorts of, you know what, if you're driving a Tesla and using the Tesla superchargers, odds are charges, you're going to find, you know, the charges aren't going to be so busy that you can't find a charger to plug into. They're fast, they're up and running. It's very rare, you know, like maybe during school holidays and a lot of people are traveling there might be some traffic jams at Tesla superchargers. And as Tesla opens up those superchargers and makes them available to non-Tesla cars, that might also be a situation. But generally when you're driving, you know, with, with um, Teslas, it's, it, you know, the drive up from Melbourne was just an absolute doddle. It was really easy. 
when you're not driving a Tesla at the moment and things are getting better all the time. Now you'll notice that um, the speed limit has now changed to 110. So again, I just hold down on the right hand stalk and my car adjusts to 110. Um, oh, I've got a Model 3 coming up on, on my right-hand side. Hello. I'll, I'll wave. We'll see, if, we'll see if we get a wave back. Very few people do the Tesla wave anymore. I've actually stopped doing it, but let's see if we can... Hello. Hey, I got a wave. Yes. I <laughs> got a wave. So as I was saying, um, when you're not using Tesla chargers, I, I, I sort of try and plan my trips with sort of military precision. So I've got a primary charger, right? That's the charger that... A better route planner has told me to, to use but i'll also go into plug share the night before and check what fast chargers are relatively close to that fast charger that i'm going to so that if i get to the fast charger that a better route planner has told me to go to and that fast charger is out of order or the, it, it you know there's there's cars already charging there and there's going to be two other cars to get through i've got a secondary and a tertiary option just in case now you might be watching this going, well, I don't have to do that with a petrol car. No, you don't have to do that with a petrol car. So yes, when you're planning a non-Tesla electric road trip, you do need to spend 10 minutes the night before you go just to plan out the trip a little bit more. It is a little bit more, but it's 10 more minutes. It's not that big a deal. And that extra planning, if something does go out of plan at least for me it it, it it alleviates a lot of the stress so instead of just assuming i'll just trust the software and you can trust the software but the software doesn't always know when charges are down or if it's busy it normally does but just in case you know you never know so i think that extra little bit of planning is just going to make your trip a lot more stress-free um Potentially, potentially, there's no need for that stress as well. So yeah, we'll resume probably in about, oh, I don't know. I'll bring you back in about when we're about sort of four or five minutes away from the charge and we'll see where we are in terms of percentage. Actually, I should mention, you'll notice that I'm talking a lot about percentages, not kilometers left to drive. So if I tap on the percentage, it shows me how many kilometers effectively I've got left in the tank. Um, I prefer not to look at kilometers left and I just look at percentage left. I don't know why, but mentally that just, I feel, I, I, I get less stressed by looking at percentages rather than um, kilometers left. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you when we get close to the charger. Talk to you soon. I've actually decided to skip the Sutton Forest Charger and go straight to Goldburn. Now, now here's the reason why. So originally, a better route planner was saying I should go to Goldburn. So I'm just sort of actually going back to the original recommendation of a better route planner. And the reason for that is because this was, so I, I looked at a better route planner who was saying, right, if you, if you go to Sutton Forest, and charge it's saying i should charge all the way up to 95 percent because then i should skip goldburn and go all the way to gundagai and get there with 10 percent but i'm going to get there with like 61 percent 58 percent and then to get up to 95 percent something to understand about batteries is from 10 to 20 percent all the way up to 80 percent a battery is going to charge quite quickly but from 80 percent to 100 percent a battery is going to charge quite slowly so for example on like a super fast charger you could go from 20% to 80% in 10 to 15 minutes, but then to get from 80% to 100%, it could take you another 15 to 20 minutes. So when you're on long drives like this, if you have the ability to only charge up to 80 and then get to the next charger, that's like the most efficient way to do it. So if I go to Sutton Forest, it's not the most efficient way to do it. It's more efficient if I go further, go to Goldburn, get my battery at a lower percentage and get to 80% at Goldburn and then go to Gundagai, so on and so forth. So you spend less time charging. So I'm just gonna go onto here and change this to change it to the address to Goldburn. So let's go in there and Navigate to Charge Fox Goldburn. Mm. 
navigate to charge Fox Goulburn. Maybe I need to put on an American accent. No, don't go to Goldberg. That's not, that's not a, no, that's not where we're going. Navigate to Charge Fox Goldburn. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> okay, so, if you have a mixed accent such as mine, <laughs> oh, that's classic. If you have a, 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 a globally mixed accent such as mine and you want your car to understand you put on an American <laughs> accent and it'll what okay so I'm only going to so I'm going to be down to 52 percent oh, see that's okay so that's, that's only 10 percent less you know what I'll get there I'll play oh see now I'm thinking can I go any further so I wonder if there's any I wonder if there's any charges, just a, like a, you know, a you know what, I'll just go to Goldburn, we'll follow the plan, we'll go to Goldburn, we'll charge, we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, so now it's saying we're going to get to Goldburn with 51%, we'll get there in 49 minutes, chat to you when we get there. Well, the weather has truly turned atrocious. I just drove through some fog that was, I believe the phrase is, thick as pea soup. We're about 28 minutes out of Goulburn, and you can see our efficiency has um, changed. So the drive is 165 kilowatt per hour, since charge 159. Um, now it's pretty, we're going to be down to 45% when we get there. Um, yeah, 27 minutes out, let's see how we go. It's, it's interesting, you know, I appreciate you've got to sort of, you know, it, dif different cars are going to have different battery sizes, different efficiencies, so, like for me, for this car, it would be nice if there was another fast, like super fast charger between Goldburn and between Gundagai, so I could go to that one, and then maybe even skip Gundagai and go all the way to Wodonga. Um, and, and I think as the infrastructure gets better and as things spread out, we're going to get to that stage where no matter how much range your particular car has, whether your car has more range or less range than other cars, they'll, you know, there'll be more fast chargers, more spaced out, so you can optimize your particular journey for what your car is capable of. So, um, yeah, totally doable now, but it's only going to get better. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's catch up again when we get golden. It's going to be interesting. So, when I last checked, um, if these charges were available if, if someone had checked in on plug chain now again it's not guaranteed because you know you could you could get there and someone's there but they haven't checked in on plug share because not everyone does not everyone knows about plug share hopefully you know channels like mine and others can help you know spread the word that that hopefully more and more people use plug share and more and people remember to check in i will admit that there are times when i you know, when I get there, I charge, and I, I should check in, but I forget to check in. Um, so, yeah. So it should be just coming up here on the left. It always seems to be at an unnamed road. Um, I'm going to guess that it's at this service station coming up. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's at the service station. So let's pull in here and see... There we go. So there is someone here. There's an Atto 3 charging, but that's fine because there's supposed to be two super fast chargers. Oh, there's three ports. And I'm guessing the fancier looking ones here are the, um, the fast chargers. Oh, that's interesting. So there's a, there's a spot of rain on the camera. That's kind of blowing. This, this is another interesting thing that I actually think Tesla's missed an opportunity because where the charge port is it makes sense because that's where 
you know, where um, the petrol port is on petrol cars. But you have a look like this Auto 3 here next to us. I think it's an Auto 3, yeah. Yeah, it's an Auto 3. Their charge port is on the front. Like, there's, there may be a technical reason, but there's also the possibility of less technical reasons as to why you put the charge port on the back of the front. So you may as well just put it on the front so you can charge in. Yeah, yeah anyway. It's an idea. Um, right, let's jump out and start charging now. Uh, these are Charge Fox. Now I could use the app to activate this, or I could use the RFID the RFID card. I am going to use the RFID card because that should be easier. So let me just go and grab that from the center console, and let's go plug it and see how this goes. Okay, so this should be fairly straightforward. Um, I do like that it's got instructions, so take it out, do that, do that. So let's pop that out, open the charge port, plug that in. Yep, plug connected. Now we RFID card it. Why is that not doing anything? Do I need to push a button? Huh. Okay, that's not working. Um, okay, so let's go into our phone and we will unlock the charge port. Maybe we need to use the app. Or maybe there's a button I need to push. Okay, so let me go and go into the ChargeFox app. And we'll try it like that. So open charge port. Plug it in, and now let's go on to, here we go, and this is 4507, yep, details, 45, ah, we are waiting for further parts, it's broken, it's broken, okay, so let's see if we can use the slow one. <sighs> didn't say it was broken 4030 that one's broken too ha ha okay this is i mean in a way this is good because i want a drama i got drama okay so um so either we see how long that person's going to be or we look at options right first of all I really need to pee because I've just drunk like a liter and a half of water. So let's unlock the charge port, put that back, move the car, and see what's what. Actually, before we go, let me just jump onto. Um, see, it's interesting, nothing on here says faulty. That's annoying. Um, now, let's just jump onto here and see if this BYD is very kindly checked into PlugShare. Oh, really to be and if if they've said how long they're gonna be uh, today is the 13th nope they haven't checked in see and again they haven't checked in so let me go to the bathroom and then we'll get in the car and we'll see what we're gonna do okay so there's some good news and some bad news the good news is as I sort of walked around the corner I saw four guys walking with purpose back towards where I am, um, and I figured, oh, they're probably the um, the owners of the Atto 3, and it turns out I was correct. They were the Atto 3 drivers, um, so they very kindly left and said, yep, no, the child is working just fine. Interestingly, chatting to them a little bit, um, four guys, it was a rental Atto 3, and they had driven up uh, from Melbourne for the show, just like I had, so that was um, interesting. They, um, I won't say who, but they work for a car company, so... Um, interesting uh a little interesting conversation um if you guys are watching it was nice to meet you all um all right so now let's plug in and let's see what happens and how this all works and what we're going to decide because we're 44 percent yeah what percentage do we need to get to to get to gun to guy all, all that sort of jazz so let's go and plug in so take two um it's liquid cool that's pretty cool uh, so take that out open up the charge port Plug it in, get the RFID card out of my pocket. Yep, so it's showing, now it's showing the RFID. Tap, payment accepted. Click, 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 click. And starting session. 
The bad news was that I didn't get to pee, so I really just want to do this and then run to the bathroom. Um, okay, it's starting the session. I'm going to get in the car and let's see what, what, what the plan is. Right, so as the charging is bumping up, oh, it's only going to take us 45 minutes to get to 100, but let's see if we want to get to 80%, um, would getting us to 80%, because that's going to be the fastest charging, is 80% going to get us where we need to go. So let's jump into a better route planner and go from my position and see what it is suggesting for us. Please work fast. I need to go to the bathroom. Uh, is that okay? 66. Okay, it's only charging 66. Ah, now here's an interesting thing. So, when you're going to superchargers with a Tesla, the Tesla will do this clever little thing called preconditioning. So, it will precondition the battery and get the battery to the optimum temperature for charging because batteries charge best when they're warming up. Now, obviously, because I wasn't going to a supercharger and unfortunately you can't tell the Tesla that hey I'm going to a different charger I still want you to precondition the battery hasn't preconditioned so we're charging fairly slowly at 65 66 I'm hoping that's going to speed up because this is a this is a 350 kilowatt charger and my car can charge I think up to about 130 140 kilowatts somewhere around there it's not going to get that high now but I'm hoping that in five ten minutes that charging speed's gonna gonna get a little bit quicker um, okay so interesting so this is saying that if if the next stop should be Gundagai and we need to get we'll get there with 16% if we leave here with 90% no 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 oh no no okay so if we leave here with 80% we should get to Gundagai with 16% so that's fine so we don't have to charge past 80% and we should get to kind of guy just fine. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to go to the bathroom. See you in a bit. I know it feels like I'm never going to get to the bathroom and you can see there already as the battery starts to warm up, it's getting even better. By the way, that 40%, that's to get up to 100%. So it's going to be a bit quicker. We'll, we'll note the time there, but Quickly, before I go to the bathroom, what I need to do as a good citizen, which I just said I should do, is I need to check in here. So let me check in. And one of the main, really one of the really big reasons why I want to check in here, um, and it says how long you're going to be here. So I'll be here maximum 40 minutes, and I won't even be here that long, but let me just put in 40 minutes. You can't, so I'll put in 45. Um, the reason why I need to check in is to let other people know that, you know, that, that this charge is being used uh, so that they don't come here. But also if they do come here, um, they can message me through the PlugShare app. I think they've reactivated that feature. Um, let me just put in what speed I'm getting at the moment, 74. And that way they can, you know, just message me through here and go, hey, how long are you be going to be? Um, and particularly as a Tesla driver, I could go to a supercharger, whereas if you don't have a Tesla, you you need to use these chargers. You can't use the Tesla ones at the moment. So I also want to put that in there so that if someone does need to charge desperately, I can move my car and I can just go to the supercharger and they can they can take it. So um, yeah, try trying to be a, a nice responsible citizen. Now I'm really yep, yeah, now I'm really good. <laughs> So it's 9.51 now and we're up to 83%. It never got um, faster than 75 kilowatts and we've reached enough to, to head out and, and head to Gundagai. But before we go, I did just want to look at what would be my options if I wasn't in a Tesla. Because worst comes to worst, if I needed to charge and I got here and, and this was taken that was used, what have you, I could have just gone down the road to the supercharger and charged there. But what if I wasn't driving a Tesla? What options what I've had. So let's go and open up the PlugShare app and see what um, charges are around here or what I could get to. So just in Goldburn there's a couple of AC chargers, so Best Western, um, there's one there, but that's a Tesla one. Uh, within Goldburn, there we go, there's a Type 2, yep, so there's a 22 kilowatt. So again, it would have been slow, but I could have plugged in sat down, had breakfast, um, use that one. There's also another one. Okay, so that's the that's the supercharger, but right next to the supercharger at the Visit Info site, there is 
another type 2 that people were getting 7.4 so there aren't super fast charges but there are plenty of charges you know there's, there's three charging options in Goulburn and if we zoom out uh, what have we got oh I could have just gone back up the road to BP so BP they would be a 75 kilowatt one so that's that's it's more than I'm getting here so yeah it actually it wouldn't have been too terrible worst comes to worst if this charger wasn't working or it was taken I could have gone up the road down the road and there are options for me so let's go ahead and stop the charging here so I could do this on the device there but I can also do it here within the charge fox app I can go in and see that I'm using it where do I see that I'm using it surely I'm no this isn't free um Yes, I know it's in use. It's in use by me. How do I... Huh. Maybe because I started it with the RFID card, it won't let me do that. So let me just go and unplug and we'll uh, get on our way. We did charge a little bit longer than planned. I, I actually got chatting to these lovely folks in the BMW... I think it's an i3. Um, they've had that for eight years. And, you know... I mean, you can see it it's in, it's in great nick and they're loving it it's just just nice chatting to people about electric cars um so before i leave i'm going to check out of plug share and then i'm going to cheat a little bit um in terms of how i'm going to get to gundagai because the charge fox chargers in gundagai are right next to the tesla superchargers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell my car to navigate to the gundagai superchargers because then the ch the car is going to precondition the battery and in theory in theory when i get to gundagai um then I should be able to charge fast because the battery will have warmed up. So let me go and check out of here. Um, so I mean, it would have, it's going to check me out anyway, but I will go and check out and do the responsible thing. And um, I'm going to put the navigation for Gundagai into here. Um, so I'll just put on charges. And so I'm showing Goulburn is the closest, but then let's go down a bit, supercharger Canberra, no, okay, let's just pull out of the map, uh, and I'm confused by the map, where, oh, for heaven's sakes, um, that's Gundagai, there we go, and it shows me there that five stalls are available, well, it doesn't matter that five stalls are available, because I need to try, it. oh, you know, I should check if, the, I mean, I'm, I'm an hour away or, or even more, but I should check now in PlugShare if um, the Gundagai, if the Gundagai Fox, Charge Fox charger is in use. So let's go and I think, where in heaven's name is Gundagai? No, that's Shepparton. I'm really bad with Australian. Oh, there we go. So yeah, Oliver's. No, that's the Tesla one. So we need to zoom right in because they're like when I say next to each other, they are right next to each other. And today's the 13th. And so on the 13th, there is someone there at the moment. Are you waiting? No, no, no. I've just finished. All right. Great. Thanks. No worries. Um, see, and this is one of the, so that was someone just checking if, if they can plug in. Um, and so there is someone there. They logged in about half an hour ago. So by the time I get there, I'm going to assume that they'll probably have moved on. But yeah, so let's uh, head off and see how the next set of the journey goes. So calculating, gun to guy. It is an hour and 46 minutes and it's pretty good. We'll get there with 50. We're, uh, you know what, just for, just for, just for jollies, let's check the Wodonga supercharger navigate to the wodonga supercharger please nah are we gonna yeah no it's telling us to to, to stop at gun to guy anyway so no so we we're not gonna have to charge for long um but yeah we do have to go to gun to guy so let's go to supercharge gun to guy and we'll use the charge fox ones there cool let's 
let's head out. This is going to be a challenge. Um, see, again, like for my car, if my car was, like if, if there was a, ch a charger between Gundagai and Wodonga, wait a minute, why don't I check that? Because if I'm going to get there with 57%, like, I want I, I want to be getting to places with like 20%. And charge, you know, super fast from 20 to, to to 80 or whatever, and then, you know, so so basically slightly longer charging but fewer stops. Whereas this is working out to be, see, I should have I should have calculated this slightly differently. Hmm. Hmm. I might pull over next chance I get, which I think will be pretty soon, and I'm just gonna see what fast charges are between Gundagai and... No, no, no. No, I'm not going to. I'll tell you why. Because I want to go to Gundagai because I want to do this preconditioning trick so that I'm telling my Model Y to precondition the battery because it thinks it's going to a supercharger, but it's actually going to plug into the Gundagai um, Charge Fox charger. And I want to see if I get a faster charging rate right off the bat from that um yes yes let's do that okay well we are an hour and 44 minutes away from gundagai uh, 174 k's to go probably we'll catch up maybe somewhere along the road or alternatively we'll um i'll check in with you sort of you know once we're a, a couple of minutes away from uh, the charger and the gunner guy, um, talk to you soon. I want to jump in quickly because we've got about 32 minutes before we get to gunner guy and the car just came up to show me that it is starting to precondition the battery for supercharging so this is this is what's going to be interesting if when we get to um Gundagai and plug into the charge fox charger um if we're going to get a faster rate of charge than what we got when we were in goldburn my guess is we will um, now there's some construction stuff, so let me just take over here for a moment. Also, I did want to add in, I said earlier that um, you could turn off autopilot by putting the indicator. Another way to turn off autopilot, just put, just tap, tap the brake, and that'll turn autopilot off as well. Um, just going to get past this person. Um, so, yeah. Should be interesting once we get to Gundagai to see how quick the charging is. Um, I, I'm actually kind of hoping it's not too quick because I do need the bathroom as 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 is my way because I I filled up this massive water bottle um, and I've pretty much emptied it. So into me. So I need to empty it out of me by the time I get there. This is this, this definitely seems to be a theme for this um for this journey and but another bit of a theme with the food that i got I, I finally sort of got around to trying some of the stuff these gge soy sauce ramen these are awesome i will definitely be getting more of these Three minutes out from Gundagai and as usual the estimated percentage that we were going to be you know got up sort of up into the 50s now it's down to 47 um, so as usual it's kind of a little bit up and down I'm not sure why um, I've been doing 110 which is the speed limit most of the way um, every now and again if I got a phone call or something I'd you know not notice that the car in front of me had slowed me to 100 or what have you um, speaking of which I'm actually going to turn off autopilot and let these two lovely cars overtake me 
because I actually need to be in the right hand lane to turn right um, into the supercharger from here. My efficiency has actually been really good. Um, yeah, well, for highway driving, it's been really good. Um, yeah, up and down. But let me let me let me just concentrate on this because the turnoff is in, in 800 meters. In 800 meters, turn right. Um, I think that's it down there. So that's just coming up now, um, and that'll probably be where I come back on here. Um, yeah. So always um, worth concentrating. Now it'll be interesting. There wasn't anyone on the charged Fox charger. Um, when I checked, oh, 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 came in a bit hot there. Should have taken my foot off the accelerator way sooner. Um, so, so I could have gotten lots more recharge, but that's my bad. Um, okay, 50k here. So now the exciting bit is first of all to see if someone's on the charge Fox charger or if it's available and um, worth seeing if the preconditioning is going to help give us a faster charge here um, because we, we tricked the car into preconditioning itself uh, for this charger so we stopped here on the way up it was it was quite it's quite a nice little quite a nice little store place oh i didn't notice on the way in that it's the roof is covered with solar panels good on them um see people walking towards the back which suggests now they look like they're walking through there and now ah there's people on there why is there a tesla driver plugged into there when they could just be plugged into here so let's see what the story is okay so hopefully this is working now this is ah that's not even on No, I think this one's broken too. So let's just go ahead and plug in, see if anything happens. Nope, I reckon that's busted. And again, so this is the experience. Now, I wonder why, though, I wonder why that model Y is plugged in here when it could be plugged in there. So, right, I will go and plug in there so i just looked in those those these ones are nrma chargers so maybe that model y maybe they're nrma drivers and i think if you're an M nrma member um you get a discount on charging so maybe that's why they are charging there because it's cheaper for them than using these superchargers but since I don't live in an MRMA state, I don't get no discount. So we'll just use the supercharger. Damn. That's a shame because I really was interested to see if that charger was going to be faster um, because of that. But, oh well. <sighs> Best laid plans of my cement, Afgang Aglay. Um, right, let's go plug in here. Use the app. Oh, no, I, try, I tried nothing. Oh, okay, so the screen's yeah. not working. Yeah, the, screen's, the, the RFID card doesn't work. Uh, but the screen... Oh, ah, oh, fantastic, thank you. So, uh, that Model Y driver actually told me that I can actually charge on there. It's, it is working, um, but the screen's not working. The RFID thing's not working, but the app is working. So, um, let's give this a try. Because, I'm, again, I'm really curious to see if because i mean I'm, I'm assuming the battery is still warm from the preconditioning so let's see if um this works and apparently it's nine cents per kilowatt cheaper so that's you know that's 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 a every little bit helps um especially these days so let me just park really badly and let's plug in and see how we go well that was very nice of that model y driver to um sort of help me out with a little bit of information so again these are some of the challenges that we're going to come up against that that we really need to work on so i thought this wasn't working because the screen's off i plugged in nothing happened but he came and told me that 
if you plug in and you can use the RFID card's not working, the screen's not working, but the charger's working fine. So you can actually use the app to activate the charger. It's, I will say that that's not the best experience. Now, then again, the one that they were plugged into, you know, was working fine. Um, and it was good that I was getting the fastest speeds with the whole preconditioning trick. So now let's have a look at um, <coughs> where we go to next. So I changed the position to, to our position here. I've said, right, we're going get to get up to 80%. And um, a better route planner is actually suggesting that we go to Takuta. We'll get there with 60%, but just top up um, for six minutes up to 75%, because then that will get us to... Banawatha, Banawatha, I think, Banawatha North. Um, I think what I might do is, um, I think what I might do instead is I might wait here a bit and get up to um, 80, 85% here and then skip to Kuta and go straight to Banawatha North because I reckon Banawatha, oh, see, I reckon's, I'll drop 15%. Should we risk? No, you know what? Let's put, let's put the map in for Banawatha North. And um, let's see if that's going to get us there or not. So that's... Okay, so let's, let's, let's jump into PlugShare and just find that charger. Um, I think that's, yep, just past Wodonga, unless, I mean, I could just type in the, so that's, what's, the, uh, you know, I could type in the address, but it's easier just to do it this way and share it with the car. So let's go ahead and share that to the car and see whether the car thinks we can get there on the... 78 80 percent they were on again this is different because i've told a better route planner that i'm in i'm in an ionic um so again the 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 you know the efficiency of the car is slightly different so i reckon i reckon i'm going to risk it so at the moment the car is predicting that i'll get there with 20 percent battery i'll probably get there with 10 percent battery but i think that's um i think that's i think i think, I think we should i think we should be okay so Let's just go back into a better route planner and just double check uh, what's after that. So after Banawath North, um, then we drive to Avenel, and we only need to get up to fifty-eight percent there. So pretty quick charge. So yeah, so I reckon, I reckon we get up to eighty eighty ish here, and um, we head out from here. We 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 skip Takuta, we skip the six-minute charge in Takuta. And we head straight to Banawatha North, and we should we should make it there. Now this is saying two four. Okay, yeah, cool. Okay, well let's let's see how we do. So let's go and plug and head up. Okay, so that was cool. Um, met lovely gentleman who has who has a, an Audi e-tron. He's been loving it since November. Um, we charge. A little bit more than we were planning to, but, you know, I, I tend to, I'm a talker. Uh, right, so now it's predicting that we will have 33%. Actually, let's have a look at a better route planner and say that we have 93% and where it suggests that we would go. Okay, cool. So same sort of setup, but we, yeah, so now it's definitely telling us to go to... So same setup, but it's telling us to cut out that, that single charger. So let's get going. That never gets old. Yeah, just putting your foot down and just zoop. That never gets old. Okay, run away. Um, now, it will be interesting to see how we end up so it is at the moment saying that we should get to the next charger with 40 percent um let's see how that works out it's about two hours away 204 kilometers away um 
world chicken soup. Three minutes out from the next charger. We've done well, so it's again, it's estimating now that we'll get there with 40%. Um, uh, efficiency's been pretty good, 146 um, on this drive, which is good. It's interesting, on, on my drive up, when I was using all the superchargers, which I mean, that's neither here nor there, but on the drive up, um, it was all pretty much sort of like, 160, 160 there or thereabouts. And this is like, you know, quite a bit better. So I wonder if, I mean, it could be that I had a headwind. It could be that it's just uphill, more uphill to get to Sydney and more downhill to get to Melbourne. I, just, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I might try and see if I can look into that a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, again, it's interesting also that this charge is a little bit off the height, but it looks like it's only oh, 2.5 kilometers until we get to where we're going, so it's really not that far. Um, as usual, I'm very relieved to see that there's a bathroom there, because, um, jeez, I'm, you know, look, on the bright side, I am well hydrated, I will, I will say that. I have definitely made sure that I am well hydrated on this drive. Two minutes to go. Interestingly enough, I um I had a quick look at PlugShare about an hour and a half ago, and there were three Ionic fives checked in and charging there, which is pretty cool. Um, I hope one or two of them are still there. It'd be, be interesting to, to have a bit of a chat to to those drivers. But um, yeah, let's see what's there. It looked like from the photos that there's quite. I mean, I could have just looked at the details, but my brain's not quite functioning for that. Um, look, there were quite a few charges at this charging location. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how many are working, um, how many there are, how many are being used. It's also interesting that um, it's definitely gotten warmer. You know, it was, it was, it was a little nippy this morning, but um, we're up to 28 degrees now. So apparently, this charging, I think MAPS has um, set me on a little bit of a goose chase because I don't see anything that looks like, no, okay, that is not, this is not where that, that's definitely not the charging station, so it's probably behind me. I'm going to turn around and go to that service station because I reckon that's probably where I need to go. I'm going to guess it's in that service station little center there. Um, otherwise, well, this will make the video a bit more interesting. Yeah, it's definitely not there. Um, it's interesting because I took like the map thing from PlugShare and just shared it through. So, interesting. But yeah, I, I, I would hope it's it's all in this sort of center here. Worst comes to worst, I'll... Oh, yep, yeah, there's the charges back there. So, just drove past... Oh, look, it looks like there's an Atto 3. There's a Model 3 there. Looks like there's quite a few, um... Quite a few people charging. Yeah. Quite the little gang. And it looks like it is full. So let's go and have a chat and see, actually let's go park there and we'll see what the situation is and how long I might need to wait. Looks like this Atto 3 is waiting. So we might have to just jump back to a different one, but yeah, let's see what the story is. I will update you shortly. So that was a bit of an interesting situation. So I arrived here, there's four chargers, there's two 50 kilowatt ones, I think, and two 350 kilowatt ones. There's a there's a, a BMW plugged into one of the 50 kilowatt ones. The other 50 kilowatt one is not working at the moment. Um, there was a BYD at a three plugged into one of the 350s and another uh, Model 3 
plugged into another one of the 350s. Now you might be wondering, why am I finding so many Teslas on non-Tesla chargers? Well, because you know, in Victoria, if you're a member of RSCV, these are RSCV chargers, you get 40% off, which is nice. Um, but there were a couple of people hanging around, so I came out, said hello. Um, one of them hopefully is a new viewer. Thanks for subscribing and and, and um, liking the channel. I look forward to hearing your feedback. Um, lovely, lovely folks. We you know, chatting about electric cars as you do, um, and the you know the, the folks in the Model Three said, "Oh, once that once one of those free up, they only need about ten percent." Um, and the BYD Atto is now charging, so the Model Three dual motor plugged in. They've just left. I've just plugged in. And you can see I'm actually getting some pretty decent speed. So I'm getting 98 kilowatts. Um, and I only need to get up to about 80% because I had a look on a better route planner and you can see here that it's showing that from here, if I had 80%, I only have to go um, 179 kilometers to Avenel, uh, plug into the EV charger there. Uh, I only need to go from 13% to 58%, should only be 12 minutes. And then that'll get me to Chadston with 11%. Knowing me, I'll probably end up chatting to a few people um, and I'll probably end up with a little bit more than 58%. But yeah, that's it. So as long as that EV charger is up, um, that's, that's going to be the trip. Right, into the home stretch. We've just got one more charger to do. Um, I've already put in the... Uh, Directions for our next one is Avenel. As usual, um, I end up chatting to someone at the charging station, and instead of charging up to 80, I charge up to 88%. Um, but, you know, no surprises there. Let's get on our way. So we've got one more charging stop in Avenel. We, sh we only need to get up to about 58% there. That's who we end up chatting to and what percentage we end up getting to. But, um, yeah, let's close all our windows and get going. It'll be interesting to see um, what the EV charger is like. I'm, I'm also a, little, a, a touch anxious about that one because there is only um, two charge points at Avenel, um, according to PlugShare at the moment, there's no one there at the moment. So let's see how that works out. Now at the moment, somehow in, in, in the minute that we've been driving, um, it's saying that we're going to get there with 38% instead of 36%. Um, but uh, let's see what, what it says once we get onto the highway. I am going to, oh, yet again, I, there was a, on ramp or off ramp or something there that I, I, I potentially could have had to have gone on to, but no, it's all good. We're going to Melbourne and um, let me turn the aircon on because I am roasting it here. Um, and Melbourne is up ahead. Cool. So let's see. So now it's saying 39. Okay. Let's see what it says when we get onto the highway and start doing a 110. If you can hear me over the aircon, look, it, it is 30 degrees outside, so it is um, a little warm, and I have turned the air conditioning onto high. Once I get onto the highway, I'll turn it onto low. And I'm, I must, another thing that I do really like about the, t the Model Y is the air conditioning cools the car down really quickly like I'm already feeling you know quite cool so um, like I'll be able to turn this to low in about 30 to 40 seconds let's get on here cool and autopilot change that to low and right, hour and 40 minutes. Um, we're down to 37% predicted when we get there. Let's uh, see what it actually is. 289Ks to Melbourne. Almost home. I'm really looking forward to getting home. See you soon. <laughs> Our 
I've changed plans just a smidgen. So Avenel, where we were going for the EV charges, is a little bit further past Euroa from this direction. Um, so we're going to go past Euroa, and I remembered that there are some charge fox, um, hyper fast chargers, 350 kilowatt chargers, just like the ones we were just at, at um, a petrol station just just off the highway by Euroa. So, and I could charge up to 80% there and get home just on that charge. So I'm gonna go there instead. And the reason why I think this actually, oh, that guy's a bit wobbly. Let's um, let's get past the wobbly truck, and then I'll I'll fill you up while we're getting past the wobbly truck. So my logic here is, we get to Euroa, we try and use the charge Fox chargers there, and if everything's you know if they're available, I checked in PlugShare, they seem available. Um, there were people there like four hours ago, so probably not there anymore. Um, if they're available, charge up to eighty. We'll probably end up chatting to someone, go past eighty is seems to always happen um, but even if we just get up to 80% we can then get all the way home just on that charge happy days uh, but if there are charges that are not working or if all the charges are busy then worst comes to worst we just pull out of there and keep going to Avenel and we use the EV charges in Avenel and nothing sort of changed so I've just added the charge Fox charges as a stop because in, in maps on the Tesla, you can tap on these three little buttons and you can add a stop. So I did that to add the stop um, of Charge Fox. So I've still got Avenel as the final destination for this trip, um, but I've got the Charge Fox ones in there. And I've got, you know, it's saying that we're going to get there with 47%. So theoretically, let's say we get there with 45%, we only need to charge 35%. And we're, we're, we're away and we get to go home. So, um, yeah, we will find out in about an hour and three minutes time. Exciting, isn't it? We're two minutes out from uh, the Charge Fox station in Euroa, so let's see if we're going to get there and a charge is going to be available or if we're going to just move on by and continue on to Avenel. Um, so I think this is the service centre, so one kilometre ahead. Looks like this is the one. Also, I apologise for how blown out this is, but the sun's streaming through and my ND filter is down in the bag down there and it would be unsafe of me to reach for it. Right, here we go. Place your bets, place your bets. Now we're only down to 50%, which means we only need to get 30% while we're here. So that should be interesting. What is it about black utes? Every black ute I've seen here has just been like hurtling down the road. And it's like, you know, like red cars. Oh, look at that. All those cars are lined up trying to get petrol. I wonder if the charges are going to be just as busy. Oh, they look busy. They look busy. They look busy, but they don't look that busy. That looks, av that looks available to me. I'm gonna have to do like a 50,000 point turn here. Gee, this place is busy, isn't it? Let's go. Plug in. May have parked a little too close, but it'll work out. So open charge port. Grab the charger. Plug it in. Welcome. Connect OK. And now let's see if we can use the RFID card. Ooh. 
that clicked. Oh, it's saying charge cable not fully secured. I just heard that on. Okay, no RFID card. I will use the app. Wow, it's really busy here. It's, it's really busy. So, um, started up with the app, preparing a charge session. Your car is charging. Happy days. So, how are we doing? 53, 77. I reckon because it's so warm. 97. Yep, it's charging pretty, pretty quick. 103, that's pretty decent. I reckon that's probably about as fast as we're gonna get. But that'll get us to 135 minutes, which we don't need, we only need to get to 80. So let's, as usual, Mr. Siv here's gonna go find a bathroom. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll sort that out. I don't need to buy any water, I've got enough water at the last stop and we'll get up to where we need to and we'll be on our way. Right, well we're up to 81% which is plenty. Um, I'm holding my hat up here to get rid of that glare off of the screen so hopefully that helps. Um, I actually put in the navigation for uh, a bowls club near Chadston that I know has a free 11 kilowatt charger that very often is not being used. So um, I think I'm gonna to navigate to there instead of going straight to Chaddy because very often um, the Chadston charges are always busy. Um, so let's have a look and see what percentage I should be by the time I get there. And if I can get there, I should get there with about 37, 30-ish, oh, 38, there we go. So 30, 38 it's predicting I think maybe 30 somewhere between 30 and 38 is what my prediction is and this is the final leg let's um let's head home so it's a long weekend here in Victoria um, and I did find it amusing that there is queues for the petrol uh, pumps and yet I was able to just drive up and get a charge that was that was any I know I'm being silly I'm being silly because it's just as, it's just as in fact let's be honest at the moment more likely that I would not be able to get a charge as opposed to not being able to get you know a, a petrol pump but it's amusing because so often you know when there are issues of not enough charges you hear all about it on the news I get it because it's newsworthy and it's new and people are excited or scared of new things oh that was not good um, but you don't get that when, the, although maybe other news will be about how, you know, lots of people were away for the weekends and so, you know, they, they, there was queues of petrol pumps. Although that's kind of old news, isn't it? And I think, um, you know, at busy times there will be queues for petrol pumps and there will be queues for electric charging. So plan accordingly, have backup plans or, yeah, what have you. Melbourne. Homeward bound. I wish I was homeward bound. Hopefully that's not enough to get me a copyright strike. Yeah. Well, we're on a one, two, three, four, five lane highway and we've been slowed down to 80 kilometers so we must be in Melbourne. I'm not a car person even I find this silly and frustrating but I digress. Um, we've got about 29 minutes until we get to the bowls club. ETA at the moment is that we should get there at 6.57 um, and estimation for uh, battery percentage when we get there is 35. So yeah looking good we we hit traffic, oh, I don't know, about 20, 30 minutes ago. Um, but it's been, it's been, it's been flowing okay. I mean, look, it's 6.30, so, you know, we've, 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 we've skipped rush hour. Um, so door to door, I think it'll end up being about 12 hours. Yeah, because we left, we left, we left Bondi at about seven. So we'll get there just under seven. So, yeah, about 12 hours. I'm not quite sure why, because, I mean, I didn't really spend that much. Well, I suppose I've spent... There's been about an hour charging, but I didn't spend that much time charging, so yeah. 
So not, oh, you know what, i tell you what it was. It was like, so for example, um, in, oh, of course it's the one that I can't remember how to pronounce. Banner weapon, banner rep, that one. Uh, it was that one where I arrived and there were no charges available. So I spent 10 minutes, again, it, it delayed me like 10, 15 minutes before I could plug in and charge. Um, and to be fair, again, I ended up chatting Except for one, except for the last charging station, I ended up chatting to people at every single charging station, and I ended up spending more time and charging more than I was planning. Um, so, yeah, you can't really. The time is, you know, it's, this is certainly not a scientific trip. We're also now passing the well, we're sort of getting onto the CBD. So there's this lovely um, architectural piece here. These two pieces. I've always. Not always, but every now and again, I'm a little bit nervous going, I'm sure they had a really good structural engineer, but I'm not sure how much I trust anyone to have that thing over me as, as I drive under it. Um, and for those who aren't aware, so actually you would have seen this um, if you watched my Melbourne to Sydney video, this sort of domey thing here that I'm driving under, um, you know, it looks kind of cool here, but at night it's lit up and it, it looks really cool when it's when it's lit up at night. Uh, it's quite a bit, in fact, almost, yeah, you know, one out of every three car commercials that's shot in Melbourne, they'll get a shot of the car driving under here at night. Um, so that's nice. The sun is beaming in. It's a beautiful 22 degree day here in Melbourne. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch up again once we get to our destination and see how we've gone overall. <laughs> away apparently um, and as you can see the efficiency on this drive has been you know this this final drive the efficiency the efficiency compared to the rest of the drive has been even better than it's than it's been it's interesting like I I'm gonna have to sit down and look at stuff and try and work out why this drive from Sydney to Melbourne was noticeably more efficient than my drive from Melbourne to Sydney because I didn't drive any faster or slower, you know, I sort of just stuck to the, if the speed limit was 110, I went 110, you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to work that one out. Interesting enough, you know, you can see on this drive, obviously, you know, the efficiency is even better, and that's, you know, because, um, oh, that's because I put the wrong thing in the map, so I need to just go around here. Um, yeah, so it's interesting how you can see that because this drive involved a little bit of city driving um, even though I was on the highway it was you know a lot of the highways in, in Melbourne are 80k zones as opposed to 100 or 110 k zones and is she gonna check mm, thank you so yeah so that that you know that sort of explains why this uh, section of the drive is even more efficient than the rest of the drive has been. But like when you consider like the drive to Sydney, I think the drive to Sydney overall was like 163 kilowatt hours per kilometer. Um, or is it 163, 163 kilometers per kilometer? I don't know, I don't know how to say that, but that it, that thing, the one at the bottom. Um, so it was 163, whereas this one's been 146. So that's, that's quite, you know, quite a bit better. Um, now watch, the, the irony, I was going to say the irony would be that I'd get here and this one would be taken as well. But no, it looks like that there is an MGZS over there. And I know at least this that side one is working. The second one wasn't working last time I checked, but this side one is. So I should be able to plug in and get a little bit of a charge while I get some footage for you of how filthy this car is. And not just the car, but... I don't remember, you know, the the today being particularly. I mean, I, I know I said at some point, you know, like I was I was schwitzing a bit, but 
I'm going to have to air out the car quite a bit because I'm pretty, I'm pretty fresh. Um, well, there you go. We made it. Um, it is 658. Um, overall efficiency was 146, uh, 132, 907 kilometers. There we go. I'm going to plug in for a little bit. Um, I'm not going to try and do the summation now because that sun is just... I'm, I'm guessing I'm way blown out and all that sort of jazz. So I'm going to do the summation back in my office and then I, we can talk about pricing and just do an overall. So, um, hi, back in the office. I'm going to try and be as quick as I can because you have done so well to get this far. I know it's a long one. I'm going to try and plan these out better next time because now I've got a better idea of how, how the road trips sort of work. And I'll try and, if they're going to be this long, I'll break them up into like part one, part two, part three. Unless you prefer having these ones being so long. So please let me know in the comments. Although having said that, Probably only the people who want it to be so long will comment because this is right at the end and if you've made it to the end, you don't mind. I'll get on with it. So let's quickly talk about cost. Um, in terms of the cost of these trips, I do want to correct a few things that I said during the trip, which wasn't entirely correct. So as an RACV member with ChargeFox, I don't get 40 cents off, I get a 20% discount. So in Goldburn, we charged 28.88 kilowatt hours um, so normally it's that's charged at 60 cents but I get a 20% discount so that cost me $13.86 in Gundagai we charge 27.72 kilowatt hours um, that cost me $13.31 in Banawatha North we charged 30.47 kilowatt hours and that charge that cost me $14.62 and in Euroa we only charged 19.13 kilowatt hours and that cost me $9.18. So when we add that all up, that is $50.97 for the four charging stops along the road. Now, I will also mention, um, I did charge that little bit at Bondi just before I left. Um, now that charge only cost me 54 cents, but there's a minimum charge of $1 at that Bondi charger. So technically the whole thing cost me $51.97, but you can take it or leave it for that Bondi one. Um, in terms of summation and overall thoughts, I actually recorded my overall thoughts while I was in Bonawatha North. Um, so I'm going to play that just directly after this. Um, I could do that now, but I felt that I, I really captured my thoughts at the time, I think a lot better than if I tried to repeat them now. Um, I hope this has been useful. I hope this has been helpful. Um, as usual, if you have subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and like if you have liked the video. So have a listen to my summation and then a little bit of uh, that like and subscribe thing at the end again. So um, yeah, thanks. See you soon. So I just thought it's it's worth, it's interesting. Oh, so it's going the battery's low temperature, but I'm definitely getting much better speeds and charging here than I got in Goldburn first thing in the morning. Um, also, I'm a little bit schwitzy because it's 29 degrees out and um, yeah, I've turned off the aircon so you can hear me better off the microphone. The things I do for you. I just, I felt the need to sort of sum up things a little bit here now. Um, you know, I, I, I suppose like I, I was chatting to the people here and the experience was definitely a lot easier when I was charging and using the, the, the Tesla supercharger, of course, the Tesla superchargers are the most expensive chargers you can use. But as with a lot of things in life, you pay for convenience. So yes, they cost more, but they are a lot more convenient to use. These chargers, pretty much at every non-Tesla charger I've gone to, there has been a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, that first one that I got to, one out of the two wasn't working. Um, the, that was in Goldburn, then in Gundagai, um, the screen wasn't working, but you could use the app, but you couldn't use the RFID card. Um, then when I got here to wherever it is that I am, <laughs> where am I? Um, when I got to Banawatha North, um, no, no, not yet. When I got to, when I got to Banawatha North, which is where I am now, um, you know, the charges were all taken. One wasn't working out of the four. Even with that, it's still been quite a quite a stress-free trip, you know. So, for example, like when I parked here, um, you know, the other two cars were sort of in the queue before me. So I just left my car parked on the side. I went and got some water from the service station. I went to the bathroom. By the time I got back, 
you know that mo that dual model three with lovely folks um you know they only needed 10 percent they they left i came in this mg is going to take over from me in about 10 15 minutes it's it's been slightly less convenient but it hasn't been a major hassle i can't see how it could be a major hassle so absolutely there's there's room for improvement um but I was I was somewhat anxious about the possible. You know, I, I had visions of you know every charger being down and me having to sort of cheat and use the, the, the nearby superchargers and what have you. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been all right. Thanks for joining me. Um, in case this is the end, if you have um, found this video helpful, if you have liked it, please like and subscribe. If you have subscribed already, thank you so much for your support, and we'll catch you on the next one. Safe and happy driving. So we're here on Bondi and we're going to shoot the intro for the Sydney to Melbourne shoot. I've got that pretty bright light. That's giving me some hairline. I normally had it up here, but I was getting reflection on this camera on the screen, so I had to move it. That one's lighting here. And then I've got a couple of um, these lights on the wheel just to give me this little bit of fill. Um, and yeah, let's see how, how we go. Yeah. Anyway, safe travel. Lovely to meet you. See you later. Yeah. Bye. Sorry, I can't help myself. I just yep, 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 yep. Do, 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 do. Come on, 5G, work. It's always when you need it to work that it doesn't work, isn't it? This is just. Hey, What does that button do? Ooh, that button does something. Oh, so that sort of works like plug share as well. Cool. cool. Let's just turn that off. No charges near. You're rubbish. I don't know how to speed that up or not speed that up, but we'll just see how we go. Easy as that. He says confidently, and it doesn't work. I, I need to reboot the car, don't I? Yeah, okay. I might just start that all over again. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Not sure what I'm feeling, but I'm feeling something.